and intense scrutiny on the activities of satanic cults. Stories of devil worship and satanic cults corrupting young minds. Unbelievable crime at the hands of satanic cults. Possibly satanic messages on some rock music recordings. Did you have any choice? You'll all follow me. <laughs> Those who are trying to prepare themselves for entry into the evolutionary level above human, synonymous with the kingdom of God. This mansion where the largest mass suicide in American history took place. And I said, I don't care if Moon is like Hitler. I've chosen to follow him and I'll follow him to the end. I don't really have a definition of cult, but it, you could break it down as curious and unconditionally loving tribe, C-U-L-T. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth, and if you don't know who I am, I post videos concerning conspiracy theories, controversial people, true crime, and literally whatever I want. If you're interested in any of that, I highly suggest you to subscribe, and if not, that's okay. We can just hang out, have a good time. This video in particular is going to be about the famous cult from the 80s, The Finders. I feel like definitely during, you know, the 70s groovy flower child, I would definitely have been in a cult. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because no. Pretend I never said that and instead let's thank the sponsor of today's video, Vessi. If any of you guys are brave enough to read my descriptions, you know that lately I've been complaining a lot about the rainy weather and it's been such a hassle because when it rains you have to whip out these huge rain boots and you get all wet and your shoes get dirty, but thanks to Vessi, I no longer have that problem. Vessi's 100% waterproof sneakers are the perfect shoe for everyday use for going out and not feeling uncomfortable. Because you know sometimes when it's raining and then you get water in your sock and it's just like it's not it's not great but thanks to Vessi you no longer have to feel that gross feeling <laughs> thank god Vessi is not just sustainably made with less material slash water waste they are vegan as well as made with Dimatex it's a dual climate knit that keeps your feet very cool in the summer and very warm in the winter speaking of winter they're also snowproof. Yeah, I live in Chicago and we get a lot of brutal winters, but I am so, so excited for this winter to finally whip these babies out and not even have to wear my boots. On top of all of that, you don't even have to worry about the whole hassle of cleaning your shoes if they get dirty because since Vessi is waterproof, all you need to do is either rinse them with water or throw them in the washing machine, give them a day to dry, and they are good to go once again. And I know, I know, you're probably like foaming at the mouth, dying to get you a pair of these. But before you do that, what you're going to do is use the link down below and at checkout use code Haley to get $25 off your very first purchase. Again, that's code Haley to the link down below for $25 off your very first purchase. Okay, so back to whatever I was talking about before. Just cults in general are just so interesting to me. And this is, this was actually going to be a video of like different cults, but then I found this one and I was like... Yeah, no, she needs her own video. The crazy part about the finders is that it was very popular in the 80s, yet there wasn't really like that much of a hustle and bustle over it until around October 25th of 2019, the FBI records vault on Twitter uploaded a 600 page document about the entire finders cult. But before we get into this video, I wanna mention that all the products I use on my face will be linked down below, as well as all of the research that I use. You guys wanna do your own research on this, answer your questions that you have about it and stuff like that. In the 80s, there was a big uproar of this thing called the satanic panic. Children and the youth being influenced by Satanism. Also, not the introducement, but the popularization of heavy metal, like scream music. All of these suburban moms were like, we need to get our kids out of here, you know? We can't be letting our kids play these vulgar video games like i don't know what's an 80s game dungeons and dragons that could mean code for satan 
you're kidding me. There was just a huge panic around this entire thing, and then this was also the development of a lot of cults. You probably know a lot of popular 80s cults. Now, the finders didn't even form until around the 60s during the whole like uproar of like flower child and be free and peace and groovy. It was a movement of just being free and being yourself and doing what makes you happy, but then it took a very, very dark turn and that is what we're going to be getting into right now. On February 4th, 1987, a woman called the Tallahassee, Florida Police Department, two men dressed in suits, and they were watching over about six children. But the six children at the park looked very dirty, disheveled, malnourished. They had bites all over their body. The police show up at the park, and they ask the two men a few questions about the children. And when asked who they were, were they said that they were the children's teachers were on a road trip right now going to Mexico to drop the kids off at a school for brilliant children which like what does that even mean? Are you like Mrs. Pergrine or something? Obviously the police aren't buying it as to search their 1979 Dodge van, open up the doors of the van. A terrible smell came from out of the van. It's very dirty and it looked like all eight of them had been living in there for quite a while. In the van, they found a mattress, a computer, 20 floppy disks, maps, books, and letters. They took the two men into custody the two men were identified as Michael Houlihan and Douglas Emmerman. The six children were Mary, Max, Bebe, Benjamin, Honeybee, and John Paul. They took the two men into custody, potential child abuse. These kids ranged from ages 2 to 11. All of the kids when put into questioning were very very silent except for one child and that was Mary. It really helped the police get all of the information that they needed. Mary revealed to the police that the two men, Michael and Douglas, were in fact their teachers and when they asked what they would teach them, she replied that they teach us the games. She said that they had actually lived in a big building up in Washington just a few days ago they had driven down here but she didn't know exactly of where she was going she said that she had a big place down in Washington and that is where her mother also lived there she lives with mostly all women a few men and some other children it wasn't really a foster home it was just basically a big house that all of them lived in together when asked who was the leader of this house she didn't know his real name but everyone referred to him as the game caller or the stroller. At this house, they would often play games with each other. Now, when asked exactly what these games were, very bizarre games, such as the whole shirt game, where basically one of the men that lived at the house, she would take one of their shirts that had holes in it and run away with it and make more holes in it. They would take all of the men's clothes off and then put them back on really quickly and then search their pockets for change or like money. All of the six kids were shown various household items and none of them could really identify them. Typewriter, hot water, stapler, and computer. They weren't able to tell very normal modern day products. They were very dirty. They were malnourished. They had bites all over their body. And I didn't even mention this earlier. All of them weren't wearing underwear either. They handed the kids over to Child Protective Services and that is where they stayed while Michael and Douglas went to jail for child abuse. Really messed up part about all of this is that they ended up doing a rape kit on all of the children and they found that Mary and Max had actually been a victim of sexual abuse. Mary also stated that all of the kids and adults were on a raw vegetable and fruit diet and when they would get fed it was more as a reward rather than just a necessity. The men went to jail and then the six children was handed over to CPS. Tallahassee Police Department decided to call over to the Washington Police Department and see if they had any information on these six children in order to identify them. Ended up not exactly identifying the six children 
children, but they did say that they could possibly be a part of this cult named the Finders that resided in Glover Park, Washington. The only reason they really knew about this cult is because they had received some complaints about it in the past, but nothing enough to raise concern. Once they received the photos of the children, they went to the warehouse in Glover Park in order to speak with the people there, but when they got there, there was no one to be found. Not only resided in Glover Park, but they also had a rural farmland in Virginia. Police had said that they also received a tip talking about this cult. The finders said that they were attempted to be recruited into this cult, and the cult had told her that the finders was a cult that conducted brainwashing experiments, but not the typical brainwashing trying to, you know, manipulate your mind. Brain dash washing, like washing your brain of everything that you've ever known to put new information in there, thus making you sort of kind of like a follower. Also promised financial rewards such as sexual gratification and to explore the world of Satanism. Children were also used in rituals and although the parents, you know, were aware of this happening because they were in the cult as well, the grandparents feared for their safety. They went to the Washington warehouse to, you know, talk to the family again, see what was going on, but when they got there, no one was there. The things that were left were just random items such as huge bags of various photographs, color slides, and rolls of photo contact sheets. Wallet-sized pictures of of various children. They described it as kind of a school picture, but it didn't look like it was. Typically in school photos, you have that like washy background, you're very dressed nice. But with this, it was nothing. It was literally just, it wasn't like a mug shot because they were smiling. It just, it looked like a school photo, but not really a school photo. And another thing that Mary had actually told them when he asked like, oh, well, the teachers told us that you were going to Mexico to go to school. Is that right? And she told them that they don't go to school. Not only did they find these really weird school photos of the children, they also found a bunch of naked photos of the children and photos of these children in rituals. The photos also include the slaughter of a lot of goats and various ritualistic animals. The neighbors have even said that they have complained a lot in the past about the house because they always saw the kids running around and they looked very malnourished and dirty, but the police never really followed through on anything. I know, shocker, the police rather give people tickets for going five over in a 25, but when it comes to children in danger, nah, maybe another day. It was an abandoned warehouse, but it could also use as like an apartment building where people lived and people did live there. They would rent out rooms for as little as $5 a night. And a man and his wife had stayed there because they were in the process of looking for a new apartment and needed somewhere to stay. And he had said that there was actually one night where he heard a kid crying for about an hour straight and no one did anything about it, even when he went up to complain. One of the pieces of information that they found was that the leader of this cult, the game caller, aka the stroller, was a man named Marion Petty. Marion Petty was a former Air Force Master Sergeant that retired back in 1956, but then in the 1960s, he had bought a Virginia farmhouse, and that is when he decided to start his cult, The Finders. The whole belief system of this cult in the beginning was that he wanted to raise children by groups, not by two individual people and he wanted to raise them in ways of an indigenous tribe so he would often make the children you know slaughter the animals the goats to complete the rituals do the rituals obviously the kids were very very mistreated does not even come close to the actual routine of an indigenous tribe yeah, last time i checked indigenous tribes didn't have naked photos of their children and complete in satanic rituals um but you know, maybe I'm just uneducated. Neighbors had also said that only women and kids had lived in this warehouse, yet the men would quite frequently move in and out. The windows were also all boarded up and it was locked with a heart-shaped lock. Shown these six kids to the neighbors, all of the neighbors had confirmed that two of the six kids had actually lived in this warehouse. Now, after they searched the warehouse, they went on over to the Virginia farmhouse and that is where they found just as 
messed up of stuff as they found at the warehouse. Books, garments, furniture, and toys and diapers. Talk to the neighbors of this Virginia home. The neighbors had actually said that there were vans that would quite frequently transport kids in and out of this house. They wanted to say something, but they were just extremely scared to call the police because they had kids of their own. Since the Tallahassee and Washington Police Department were working together, the Tallahassee Police Department actually came out with a statement saying, that this is no longer a kidnapping case, something a lot bigger than that. They believe that the kids weren't just kidnapped. They believe that the parents in this cult, as a way to enter the cult, you need to give up your children to the leader. So that is what is believed in this situation in that the kids, you know, were just given away to the cult. Police had actually mentioned that the kids were in foster homes in Tallahassee, but a weird part about it is that the kids we're receiving death threats. I feel like these are obviously coming from Finder's cult. They are, you know, death threatening the kids because the kids basically ratted them out, especially Mary. She was not hesitant on telling them any sort of information they wanted to hear. He said that all of the death threats made to the children were untraceable calls. They never ever specified where these kids were staying, how long they were staying for, the exact houses and addresses of where they were at. That was never made public. And so that was something that really stumped police that not only was the call untraceable, they don't know how they even got the number to the house to make those death threats in the first place. Now, the police eventually found one of the members in the finders named Robert Terrell and even got an interview with him where Robert Terrell basically was the spokesman for the finders. He got on an interview disguised, which Oh my God, how creepy is this disguise? He said that this whole situation is completely blown out of proportion and it's a huge, big misunderstanding. Robert Terrell believes that since during this entire satanic panic thing, just heard the words, you know, satanic or cult and then immediately ran with it and the media blew it out of proportion than what the cult actually was, which what cult is even a good cult? Robert explains that Michael and Douglas were actually going to go to Bria, Kentucky in order for the kids to live there as well as go to school there, but there was a little bit of a hiccup in their plans, so instead they decided to go out and vacation in Florida, which, uh, you know what? I'm gonna hold back on my opinions until we get to the end of his statement. All the mother of the children actually lived in San Francisco and prior to the little detour to Florida, they called the mothers and got all of their approvals to do so. The whole reason of them going to a different school and moving to a different place is to teach the kids a new dimension of lifestyle. Right off the bat, the police were like, yeah, no, um, that doesn't make sense because Michael and Douglas were talking to the police and they were like, yeah, no, we're going to Mexico. But now all of a sudden, Robert is like, oh no, they were going to Kentucky, but then they vacationed in Florida. So I'm assuming that like, you know, Robert wasn't the highest of authorities there, weren't matching up, but nonetheless, his statement continued. As far as an explanation for the slaughtered goat pictures, fathers of the children wanted to teach their children how to slaughter animals. They wanted to teach their kids very young how to survive in the wild, and they took photos of it, can create like their own textbook sort of thing. As far as the naked pictures of the children, he replied, are you kidding me? Who doesn't have naked pictures of their children? Uh, no. Oh, that's like, that's really weird. That's really weird. Oh my God, who says that? Who doesn't have naked? Yeah, maybe like in a bathtub, but like not multiple and not them in rituals. That was another thing that he denied as well. He denied that they ever had any rituals and he was like, you have no proof. And they were like, okay, well, we saw, you know, slaughtered goat heads and naked children and we kind of got the idea. And I didn't even mention this either. Remember earlier when I was like, oh, there was this guy that moved into the apartment and he complained of a child like screaming for an hour. Police were like, what do you have to say about that? And he replied, what person doesn't know that kids scream when they're delighted? This man, um, does not have kids. I really hope he never does because 
what logic is that? I could understand, like, kids yell when they're, you know, having fun. You know, they yell, they get loud, but they don't scream for an hour. Yeah, maybe, um... No. He also explained that Mike Houlihan was actually the birth father to Mary as well as the stepfather to John Paul. What about the parents of all of the other children that you have? He said that most of the parents due to this Mike and Douglas getting arrested, they now fear of getting arrested too. So they had all fled and are hiding in fear of getting arrested. You wanna know the, you wanna know the messed up part about this? They closed the case. They closed the case. He literally said, you know what, mysterious man in a creepy disguise? I think you're right. Case closed. They closed the case. They said, yeah, <laughs> we believe you. We'll take your word for it. Have a nice day, Robert, if that's even your real name. This man shows up in a disguise and you're like, seems like he has nothing to hide to me. They literally did a rape kit on all of the kids and two of them came back positive. They were living in a van, eight of them for months these people, these two guys taking them to places that they didn't know where they were going. Former people had come forward with their stories about the cult saying that you literally have pictures of these children being in ritual. You're right. All of that really creepy, crazy stuff that you saw at the warehouse as well as the Virginia home and all of the insane stories that you would hear from neighbors, all of the stories that align from neighbors. Yeah, no, that doesn't matter because we believe Mr. Robert right here. Yeah. <laughs> I love America. He said that the whole reason why they didn't really charge anyone is because they had no substantial or physical evidence. They seemed to believe Robert when he was telling all of his stories and providing explanations for all of the photos and the books and the people and the children. Clearly unpopular opinion, but maybe, maybe we shouldn't allow this to go on any farther and arrest as many people as we know. They also talked with the four mothers of the children that lived in San Francisco. They basically said that the reason why the four children were dirty and malnourished in the first place, they were going camping, and because they were camping, they didn't have as much food as they would usually have. Said that the kids were just dirty from camping and playing, nothing abusive. These people are psychotic. These people are actually psychotic if they don't see anything wrong with this. But one particular hero of this story was a man named Detective Martinez. Now, Detective Martinez was like, you know, you and I, he was freaking out. He was like, you're kidding me. Like I've been on this case and like, oh yeah, y'all didn't see any of like what was going on. He, he was on the same wave as us and he was like, okay, no, like we're gonna reopen this case. I'm gonna get more, you know, information on it and see, you know, if there's anything I can do to bring justice to these kids and also any justice to any future kids that may encounter the same fate as these six children. He does his own digging, trying to reopen the case now with new evidence presented. Detective Martinez went to the apartment building in Washington and did a thorough search of everything once again, he found a lot of stuff that the police had just left there or didn't really pick up or bother to really look through. Martinez had said there was so much stuff there. He found diapers, toys, and many detailed instructions such as how to kidnap, purchase, buy, and trade children, how to impregnate women. When searching through the computers, he had also found a conversation between Marion, the ringleader of all of this, and someone from Hong Kong in the negotiations of purchasing two children from Hong Kong. The finders was not just something that existed in Washington. They found people from outside the U.S in London, Costa Rica, Africa, the Dominican Republic. He also found a few documents talking about an interest in 
terrorism or various explosives, as well as a detailed summary of Michael and Douglas's arrest. But the weird thing about this summary is that this summary was made the night they were arrested. The media hadn't even known about this arrest until the next day, but this summary was made on that night. So it made Detective Martinez think a little bit if they were working with the police in some weird way because it's very rare that the public person who knows nothing about the law knows information before the media does. Usually as soon as something happens, like it's immediate, people know about it. Like you hear that terrible, disgusting story about TMZ reporting about Kobe Bryant's death right when it happened and before his wife even knew about it. He went to go search the house in Virginia. This house included two kitchens, a hot tub, a sauna, a library, and a video room. This video room sparked a lot of attention to Detective Martinez because there were a lot of messed up things that he discovered in this video room, an indoctrination center, and I'll put the, you know, definition up on the screen because I didn't know what it meant either, but oh my god. And also in the video room, it looked like they had their own equipment to produce their own movies. Again, this was like during the 80s. No one really had access to how we have now, phones, cameras. You can easily go to Best Buy and get a camera and like make your own video, upload it to your computer. But since this was the 80s, that wasn't really known. Making your own videos was something that either for fun or for high quality movies and stuff like that. But in this, they actually produced their own films. He was looking through the video room. He also uncovered a lot of very uneasy photos of again children in rituals as well as children in chains and this was you know a lot for Martinez so he then just you know cut it and it was actually with the help of his partner that his partner decided to create a photo album for Martinez so he didn't have to see any of the graphic content to kind of get an idea of what exactly they were dealing with. Photos that Martinez did see included graphics actual content between the finders, but none between the children. They also found many photos of the adults and kids dressed in all white cloaks surrounded by slaughtered goats. And they also found many, many documents regarding their research. And what I mean by research is that various members of the finders would respond to different ads in the newspaper, more house sitting ads like dog walker, babysitter, tutor. And this was was just to gain more information about families kind of like the games as earlier like it's just so odd red flag is that now they were kind of mingling themselves in the public eye and no one even knew april 2nd 1987 just a few months after the whole arrest of michael and douglas detective martinez felt as if he had a good enough case to reopen this case he has multiple pictures of these kids clearly being abused, clear photos of everyone's faces. He has documents that are only available to the police, such as the summary of Michael and Douglas getting arrested, extremely graphic photos, has a pretty solid case and reason as to why they should open this finder's case back up. But when he was going to go present this evidence to an agent, it actually wasn't an FBI agent, but instead a CIA agent. So essentially, Detective Martinez, he had all of this, you know, Know, solid evidence that they should reopen the case. They go to present it. There's this CIA agent that's like, actually, we can't accept this evidence because it's a CIA case and all things must stay secretive. And since you're FBI, I'm CIA, we can't do this. And then since it was a CIA case, the FBI couldn't work on it. But then since it was a CIA case, they weren't doing anything about it. They were just leaving it how it was. Obviously, this left Detective Martinez extremely frustrated, but at the same time, there was really nothing he could do about it, unfortunately. Frustrating because there was so many clear, you know, sightings of abuse, but for some reason, no one really cared to even bat an eye. As soon as the case was closed and they said that they had no substantial evidence, 
It was actually the mainstream media that surprisingly agreed, which was very, very odd, of course, because usually the media is always the first person to exaggerate things. And they were also the people that were saying that like, oh, this isn't a satanic panic. This is like an actual cult. The mainstream media, of course, as all of us know, have a very big effect on people's opinions. So it was also believed that the reason why to say, actually guys, we were just being over dramatic. It's not as bad as it looks even though the entire time prior to the case being closed, they said nothing about how this was even a glimpse at something that it wasn't. People were really begging the Justice Department to pick this case up because the CIA wasn't doing anything, the FBI couldn't do anything. So then the Department of Justice decided to finally pick this case up in 1993, but it was now on conspiracy that the CIA was actually working with the finders and that's why the case had closed so quickly. Oddly enough, sometimes even the government doesn't even know what its government is doing. The CIA came out with a statement debunking this theory and saying that they had nothing to do with it, said that the conspiracy was actually a misunderstanding on Detective Martinez's behalf. They said that the reason they had closed the case so quickly is because one of the members of the finers was actually a part-time accountant at Future Enterprises, which was a company that often they see I agents would go for computer training. And then shortly after that, the head of Future Enterprises actually came out with a statement as well saying that they do in fact teach CIA agents. They do not use their services for malicious intent and they're not using their company as a front, which we weren't even thinking that, but okay. Later on down the road, when they were reviewing even more documents of the finder situation, it even said that one of the agents confirmed that they not only send their agents to the future enterprises for training, but they also send their people to this place called Finders Corporation. The head of the House of Representatives member of Florida named Tom Lewis even came out with a statement stating that he thinks, is it possible that the CIA was actually covering up for the finders and treating it as not that big of a deal than what it actually was. He says that there are a lot of people scrambling here and what he means by here is like the House of Representatives and why would people even be scrambling in the first place if there was nothing to hide. This was also a big trend as well and this is a reason why a lot of people didn't believe what the government was telling them is because they kept on saying that it wasn't that big of a deal and it didn't matter but then two seconds later they would turn around and they would be scrambling to hide things or saying that it was just a big misunderstanding and all these conspiracy theories are crazy but why don't you just tell us like the truth of you know and people were really asking but now since the department of justice got involved now you're gonna say your answer that's a little bit fishy said that he thinks it's disgusting that the government is turning their backs on these children these children had gone through so so much involving the Finders Corporation and the government is basically aiding that for not only the six children but also many many other children that could also be involved in this cult. This whole story is insanely messed up and not okay but I feel like there is a little bit of kind of dark humor to be found um, in this interview that Marion Petty the main catalyst, the ringleader, the game caller, the stroller of this cult actually did an interview with the US News to basically clear up the finder's name and say it's not a cult, it's a community, which come on now, isn't that the same thing? I'm gonna read you this because oh my god. Marion Petty, in the interview, he was asked, um, what the finders is. And this is what he said. He said, the finders is a company that does freelance journalism research and promotes the new age of living. I like laughed when I read that. It's like a little dark, but are you, 
freelanced where? Where is the journalism? Where are you journalisming? And then also Marin explains in this interview that the reason why the CIA was so interested in him is because his late wife and his son was a part of the CIA. And so that is why they were super interested in them. They also brought up police records that they had found of during the whole time of when Douglas and Michael had gotten arrested. It was said by a member of the finders that Marion had actually told all of his followers to flee as far as they can and that him himself was also going to go to his military base and get a plane to China. Now upon this Marion really had nothing to say and then in 2017 it was revealed even more information. Police reports were released to the public and those things included Mary's interview where in Mary's interview she mentions that there were thousands of adults so there were thousands of members in this cult and all of the adults followed the game leader. There was also this other game that they would play. They would go and run into the dark basement and hide there for hours. Like I think what they were doing is that they were telling these kids they were games when in fact they weren't games. They were just like weird things. She was also asked about the goats and she had revealed that they actually ate the goats and they had multiple cats that had gone away. It was also revealed in these documents that John Paul the stepson to Mike Houlihan, he actually had bite marks all over his arms and they were unidentified to be either an animal or a human bite. It also revealed more information on the insights of the van. There was a lot more in the van than they were telling the public. In the van, they found radios, Chinese, English dictionaries, Trojan cars, and nude pics of the children. No one at all got arrested except for Michael and Douglas, and that's just because they were caught with the child abuse. Actually, in 2006, uh, Marion Petty had actually passed away, and over the years, a lot of people kept on leaving the finders cult. By the time that Marion Petty had died, there were only around a dozen members left compared to the thousands and thousands that they had in the 80s. Someone commented this on my last video, and they were talking about how I like so confidently mispronounce words and I'm like ha 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 that's so funny but I literally just said mumbers around a dozen mumbers instead of members and I just kept talking like it like I was right that's embarrassing I'm sorry members and then that kind of leads us to our most recent topic that I was talking about in the way beginning October 25th of 2019 that is when they released the entire 600 page document of the entire occurrence now the 600 page document I'm not really going to get into because I've just been like you know telling you everything about it throughout this so yeah that's basically the story of the finders cult um again I will leave all of my research down below. So if you guys, you know, want to further your research about the finders or even, you know, uh, answer some of your unanswered questions, I will leave all of that down below. I went for like, okay, I've been obsessed with Drew Barrymore. Loved Drew Barrymore. Do you guys watch the Drew Barrymore show? It's so good. I love it. Yesterday, I was watching the Scream movie because I love Halloween and I wish it was October already. I watched Scream and Drew Barrymore was in it because this whole story, I've just been immersed in the 80s recently and that's why I did a little 80s grunge look. This was fun. <laughs> no, get as fun as it could be. I try to make jokes throughout these videos because I always see a lot of comments of like, usually I'm very scared of these like spooky videos, but then when you talk about it, it makes me feel better. And like, that's what I try to do. I am serious when I have to be, but other than that, I try to make these as like fun, you know? Oh yeah, I wanna start doing these things at the end of my videos where I show you guys my fit. A lot of you guys always ask me where I get my clothes and stuff. Bitch. This necklace is from Hot Rags. This choker is from Rue 21. I stole it a few years ago. Don't call the police. These earrings I got for my birthday. Ring is from Primrose and Fern. I think it's called. This shirt is from the thrift store. These pants are from the thrift store. 
these shoes are from Vessi. Thank you to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. If you guys want to follow me on any of my social medias, uh, such as my Instagram or Snapchat, that will be linked down below, as well as my PO box if you want to send me anything. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Make sure to go outside, breathe some fresh air, watch your favorite movie, paint, draw, whatever makes you the happiest. Make sure to do that today. I think that's it. I love you guys very, very much, and you will never understand my love for you. And I'm so, so happy that you guys are really enjoying these videos where I don't talk about controversial people because for the longest time I was like, girl, they are not gonna tune in unless I'm talking smack about someone. But for some reason, like you guys still stick around for everything that I do, and that really means a lot because it's like, oh, maybe I don't have to, you know, talk about controversial people for new people to watch. So yeah, that really means a lot, and I love you guys so, so very much more than the the more I love you more I love you more than there are stars in the sky I just made that up and I'm not sure if it makes sense I actually didn't make that up um a man named Nicholas Sparks made that up so shout out to Nicholas Oh, should I do like a movie suggestion of the week what movie did I watch this week I watched a uh, pure on Hulu so good so good i love it it has the the sister from big time rush big time rush is going on tour and they're coming to chicago i live in chicago and i don't know if i'm going i don't know i don't know anyone in my friend group that like listens to big time rush most of my friends were like big jonas brothers and i'm like <sighs> you know, where's Carlos at? And they're going on tour and I don't care if I have to go by myself. I'm probably still gonna go. With that being said, uh, what, uh, uh, oh. I hope you, uh, do something that makes you happy today. Do something that makes you happy today. Mwah.